Hi everybody! If you want to use Python free packages with PyRabbit like Pandas, NumPy or any other packages, then you're in the right place. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to install these packages and how to make them work with PyRabbit. Because I know that many of you already tried it and you had some kind of unexpected errors or you couldn't make it work. And this is what I hope to solve with this video lesson. Also, if you're new on the channel, my name is Eric Fritz and I teach you everything I know about Revit API and PyRevit here on YouTube, but also on my custom course platform LearnRevitAPI.com. You can check it out if you're interested. And now, let's begin with the lesson. In this lesson, first of all, we're gonna go to PyRevit developers documentation. And we need to check two articles because there are a few points that you should be aware of. These articles are create your first C Python command and anatomy of C Python scripts. First of all, in both of them you will see that the CPython engine is under active development and might be unstable. Then, if I'm gonna scroll through, you'll see that CPython scripts are always read using UTF-8 encoding, so there is no need for this line where we write coding UTF-8 in our scripts anymore. We have to use only in R and Python. Also, if you are interested what kind of packages are included in PyRevit by default, you can read it here in PyRevit GitHub site packages folder. You can see there are a bunch of different folders of packages. Here's Excel Reader, Excel Writer, and many others. Also, when you will be using C Python, you might encounter an issue when you use any interfaces. Interfaces in .NET is like blueprints for your classes. For example, you might have heard of I selection filter interface. If you're gonna use them, you might get an error saying type error, duplicate type name with an assembly. It doesn't tell you much, but it's very easy to solve it actually. If you're ever gonna get it, you just need to use this import from PyRevit import exec parameters. And then wherever you create your class from the interface, you need to define here as a variable, then their namespace and provide this. And that's gonna solve your issue. Now, in the second article, again, it tells you it's under active development, might be unstable. Right here it tells you Revit is a 64-bit application. And it also tells you that you have to use 64-bit Python installation. And right here in the writing scripts, you will notice that in the beginning of all our C Python scripts, we need to write hashtag exclamation sign and then Python free. This will trigger PyRevit to use C Python, and then we will be able to use packages like NumPy, Pandas, and so on. But we still have to install them first. And lastly, there's one little point I want to mention right here. PyRevit uses embedded C Python engine, and this engine looks at the Python path environment variable for search paths and modules. I know it sounds confusing to many of you, but don't worry. You see, in Windows we have this edit system variables environment and you can look at all your environment variables. For example, here is the variable for the path and inside there are included all different paths that might be interesting for the programming, right? And what it tells you here that you can create a new variable, call it Python path and provide all the paths to where you're going to install your pandas, numpy and all these packages. And then PyRevit will be able to look at this variable name and find all the related paths. But I won't be using this in this lesson, I'll just kind of inject with sys path append and that's going to be fine. Alright, these are the points I wanted to address in the documentation before we begin. Now you know it, we can close it and we can go to Revit. In here you can see I already prepared the button install more Python packages. And inside of this you can see as usual, have my UTF-8 encoding, title and description. But as you've just learned from the documentation, we don't need this line when we're trying to use CPython. To use CPython, we use hashtag, exclamation sign, then we write Python free. I'm not sure if we need space or no, but we're gonna try it like this. And then we wanna check what kind of version of Python does PyRevit actually use. So I'm gonna insert this kind of snippet right here. In here, we're gonna import this module. I'm gonna use this version to understand what kind of Python version is used. I'm gonna go to Revit and I'm gonna click on the button. Also, keep in mind, when you're using CPython, it's not as stable, so you might see some unexpected errors like this. Revit cannot complete external command. However, I don't know why it happens, but the second time I click on it, it works. So just keep this in mind. And in here, you can see that PyRevit right now is using the version 3.8.5. So what it means is that we have to go to the internet and download exactly the same version of Python. I'm going to open the internet and I'm going to write download Python 3.8.5. As you learn from documentation, remember that you have to look for the 64-bit installations. So I'm going to scroll all the way down and right here I can see Windows 86 to 64 executable installer. This is going to be fine. Now we downloaded it, we're just going to install Python as usual. We can click here on add Python 3.8 to path and then click on install. This refers to the same environment variables path as I showed you just a second ago. 
All right, and setup was successful. You might also see here a button to disable length path. You can click on it, it's not an issue. I've already done it, so I don't have it anymore. All right, we installed the Python. Now we are ready to go and install all the packages. I'm gonna go to search and write here CMD for the command prompt. We will need to write a few commands right here. In here, we'll need to install all the packages by using pip, install, and then name of your packages. However, keep in mind that whenever you're using pip, you might have different versions of Python installed on your computer. So it's very recommended first that you use pip, then space, dash, capital V. This will tell you what kind of Python version will be used. In this case, it tells you that I will be using Python 3.8, which is perfectly, that's exactly what I need. However, some of you might get different version here. And you'll also realize that where you write where Python, you'll see all available Python versions of your, on your machine. In my case, I have some kind of Python version for the Windows, then Python 3.10, and then Python 3.8. In my case, I'm very lucky when I write pip v, I get the correct version. Also, if I'm gonna write Python here, I'm also gonna get the same version. Here it says Python 3.8.5. To exit this Python interpreter, we can write exit. Now, before gonna go any further, I wanna address in case you have the wrong version here. Let's say that in PyRabbit instead of 3.8, we had to use 3.10. I'm gonna show you how I would do this. I'll copy this path right here, and I could just paste it like this to execute the Python command. However, when I'm gonna click, I'm gonna get an error because I have spaces in my name. Therefore, I have to use double quotes and put it inside. This way, I'm gonna execute this Python, which I provided the file to. In this case, it's Python 3.10.4. I can write exit, and we can also do the same thing, but with the pip. We just need to find the path of the pip. In this case, I know that I can remove this python.exit I can write here scripts and in that folder the pip is going to be located. We can also double check it. Let's just copy the name of this folder and then I'm going to paste it here and you can see right here is the pip. So let's close it and we're also going to put here dash v and click on enter. And you'll see that this time it's this kind of pip version and it's using python 3.10. So instead of using pip we have to use the full path to use the correct pip. Again, again, don't worry. If you're gonna write pip and v and you get 3.8, then you're on the right track. We can install all the packages. To install them, we're gonna write pip install pandas, numpy, openpy, excel, or whatever packages you need. I'm just installing packages that I really wanna test. But in your case, if you just need pandas, just write install pandas and that's okay. You can also install them one by one or you can put them all in one line. All right, now I can install NumPy, but I think it's already installed because NumPy is required in Pandas. Let's also install OpenPy Excel, which is used for the Excel files. All right, we have all the packages. Now take a note where these packages are installed. In my case, I can see here is the path. And when I'm gonna paste it, I'll see all these packages like Pandas, NumPy in this folder. So this is great. Now, we're gonna keep this folder for a while, but now let's go to Revit and actually test if we can use NumPy. I'm gonna come right here. I don't need these print statements anymore. And now I'm gonna paste a very simple snippet to make sure that I can use my NumPy module. I'm gonna import NumPy, create array, and I'm gonna print it. And if I'm gonna get any errors, it means probably that I cannot use the package yet. And when I'm gonna click on the button, you'll see that I get an error, no module named NumPy. If you see this kind of error, then PyRevit doesn't know where your NumPy package is located. So we need to provide the correct path. One way to do this is find the path where it's located, which I just showed you earlier. Then we're gonna come here. And before we're gonna try to import, we just need to import sys. And then in e sys path append, we're gonna provide the path where it's located. Also, it's good to put R in the beginning to remove all the special symbols. For example, let's say if here it would be n, you see it has a meaning. When you put r, it doesn't have a meaning. So we just put r to make a row string. Now we added this path to the system paths. Now PyRavid will be able to kind of find this path before it will try to import the NumPy. So when we're gonna go to Revit, click on the button, you'll see that this time I get completely different error. This time it says no module name globe. That's one of the dependencies of NumPy probably, and we don't have it. Now, the reason we don't have it is because in this Python 3 installation, this kind of globe module is located one module out in the lib. I think it's somewhere here, this globe. 
and you'll see right here is this glob. So in this case, we would also need to provide this path as well. And if you're wondering how can you get a list of all the paths used in your Python, you can go to your CMD. Then make sure you use the correct Python version. In this case, I'm using Python 3.8.5. Let's exit. Then you can write Python M site. Click on enter and here's going to be all the paths which are available to this kind of interpreter. This is the one that we added. Then there is the regular one, leap and so on. In my case, I will not add all of them. I'll just come back in here and I'm just going to duplicate and add this kind of parent folder of my site packages because this is where I found the globe package to be, right? It's right here. Alternatively, we could also create this system variable, call it Python path and put these paths in there just, just for your information. Now, in my case, I'm going to start with these two paths and see if it works. Now, let's remove it and click here, install more Python packages. Have a look at that. I just printed my NumPy array. So I'm going to go back. I also want to print type. Let's come in here, click on it. And now I can see it's a class of NumPy and D array. So my NumPy is actually working. This is great news. So now let's come back in here and add a few more comments. And now in here, I'm also going to bring another snippet for testing the pandas and open by Excel modules because we also installed them in this lesson. Now let's go and try it. In here, I'm going to click on it again. And this time when we run it, you can see that we get an error when we try to use pandas. There is no module named BZ2. So probably we need to add a few other paths as well. This time let's copy everything in here. Now I'm going to go back to the PyCharm and scroll up to where you added your paths, which is right here. At first, I'm going to paste all the paths right here and comment them out. And then I need a few more. But... Now we already have site packages and the library right here. So this time let's also add maybe this TLL and to our root folder of our Python. Maybe that's going to be enough. I don't think we need this path to the zip, but we're going to go and test it. Let's come here, click on install more Python packages. It's going to load a little and now look at that. We have printed our NumPy example. We have printed our data frame from pandas. And lastly, we have printed our OpenPy Excel workbook. All these packages that we installed are now working with our Pervavit. One more thing that we want to test is go all the way down right here. And let's also test if Autodesk libraries work. I'm going to write here from Autodesk, Revy, DB, import everything. Let's get all walls with filtered element collector. And I'm going to print these walls. This is just to make sure that whenever we use our pandas, numpy, or any packages that we can still work with Autodesk libraries. Also, don't forget to create your doc variable, which is used right here. Now we can go and test it. Now let's click on it and see if it works. And it's perfect. We can use our NumPy, Pandas, OpenPy Excel, and we can still access all our Revit API classes. All right, and this is how we install Python free packages to work with PyRevit. I hope it's going to be useful and you learned something. And if you want to learn more about Revit API or PyRevit, make sure you check my website, learnrevitapi.com, where I have a full blown course where I'm going to take you through all the steps to help you learn Revit API. My name is Eric Fritz, and I want to say huge thanks to my supporters and thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next videos and I want to wish you happy coding. Goodbye.